Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to The Ray Taylor Show, where I bring you the reviews on the latest movies and TV shows, as well as classic and foreign films. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and on this podcast, I'll be talking about all things film and television. Whether you're looking for a new show to binge or want to know if that blockbuster is worth the trip to the theater or just want to hear my thoughts on a classic or foreign film, I've got you covered. So join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes and let's dive into the world of film and television together. On this episode, I am talking about the 2009 sci-fi blockbuster hit known as Avatar. Written and directed by James Cameron, starring Sam Worthington, Zoe Saldana, and Sigourney Weaver, among many others, as part of this cast of many alien creatures. Uh, a paraplegic marine dispatched to the moon Pandora on a unique mission becomes torn between following his orders and protecting the world he feels is his home. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a movie I obviously have seen before, although I don't know if I've seen it since watching it in the movie theaters 15 years ago. I don't know. I've definitely seen scenes from it. This used to play on a loop at a chiropractor's office I used to go to, but I don't know if I've ever watched this movie since watching it in theaters in 3d it was also as a fun fact one of the very first movie reviews i did for one of my very first podcasts back in 2009 called the inspired disorder podcast where i had two co-hosts and i remember after work i went and drove to the movie theater watched it in 3d and then later that night, we reviewed this movie. And during that review, my computer crashed. And we had to, I don't know why they agreed to do it. My co host agreed to do it. We stayed up and we re recorded the entire episode, which was like a good hour, hour and a half, two hour long episode we recorded talking about this movie, talking about a lot of other things. That was. Kind of an insane situation uh, and a movie that, you know, I remember liking. Obviously, there's been a lot of discussion about this movie in some ways, whether the sequels would ever even come out. Uh, it took so long for these sequels that apparently are being filmed back to back by James Cameron. Also, this movie, very unoriginal with its plot, uh, having a lot of problematic aspects to this movie as well but it does have an epic scope it does it shows off all of the things james cameron is good at when making movies you know great action scenes his utilization of technology his like world building his ability to really create worlds that are believable in, in these movies, like really making things look way bigger in scale and grander uh, than, than most other directors are able to do. Um, great action, thrilling adventure. Like this movie has a lot of good aspects to it. Obviously, the, the visuals, it was pushing technology. And I enjoyed the rewatch. Obviously, you know, looking past the the problematic aspects of the movie okay looking past the fact that it's not the most original story but still visuals are great great action set pieces great fighting scenes great you know different types of action scenes from like smaller hand-to-hand -hand fight scenes to like massive battle scenes i still enjoyed it and it's also kind of a crazy phenomenon with this movie how like forgettable th so many things are like it's be i think because it's it's so similar to so many other movies it, it, you don't really for whatever reason it doesn't stick with you it doesn't have any catchphrases necessarily that stick with you like terminator 2 
doesn't have like despite the amazing visuals like it's a weird phenomenon where it didn't become as culturally impactful as the box office may reflect right i mean you may see some people dressing up as avatars here and there but it's it's weird how it didn't really infect popular culture in the way so many other big blockbusters do anyway i enjoyed the rewatch i've rewatching this movie obviously the sequel avatar the way of water just came out on streaming it's available i think on it's disney plus hbo max or max whatever it's called now so which i've been waiting for to watch because i've been excited to not only see the sequel but also revisit this movie for the first time in 15 years and also to rewatch and revisit all of james cameron's movies so next week I will be reviewing Avatar The Way of Water. I will also be doing next Sunday, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, I will be doing my top five James Cameron films as I've been rewatching all of his movies, which he doesn't have a massive filmography, but I think all of his movies are so impactful, aside from Piranha 2 which is the only movie I started to watch and just could, I just like, I, I can't do this. I can't watch. This is so bad. Um, maybe I'll try watching it again, but everything else, and I've never watched the first Terminator movie. So I'm excited to do that. Everything else I've seen, but it's been a while. Hadn't seen this in 15 years. Titanic. I hadn't seen in since like, I probably watched it a couple times after the theater, but it's still been forever since I'd seen Titanic. Um, I haven't even watched, terminator 2 in in a minute but that's probably the one i've seen the most the abyss i haven't seen in forever so i'm excited to re-watch all of the films from james cameron and wanting to review this movie before re-review this movie which technically is the second time i'm reviewing this movie it's been 15 years and it's going to be a much faster review but wanting to re-watch this and talk about it before i talk about the sequel next week so that is wh- what we are here doing today, talking about this first movie and digging into the things surrounding this movie. Because not only did this movie break a bunch of records, but it also imp- it, it kind of did many things. It changed the movie going industry. It changed uh, the home theater industry. And really implemented a very expensive fad that did not survive. That was ushered in by James Cameron, ushered in by the, this first Avatar movie. And that really ruined a lot of things. Ruined a lot of pieces of technology. Ruined a lot of movies that were trying to follow this trend, follow this fad of 3D. That James Cameron single-handedly tried to bring back to movies and cinema that had been dead since like the 50s but also doing it in a a newer way i mean this guy does like to push technology to its its limit its full capabilities he did so in so many of his movies titanic terminator 2 really kind of revolutionizing new ways of using technology for film and doing that with 3D. But with 3D, it became this gimmick, this fad that was so similar to every other time 3D had tried to take off. It's just like, it's something that they, like, he, it's, it's great. I'll get into all that. So there's, I think there's a lot of baggage that comes along with this movie that I did ha- have a lot of fun watching. But I hadn't seen it since 2009 in theaters, watching it with the the 3D glasses on. The 3D of this was amazing at the time. Obviously, it it added a lot of depth. It just it, it really transported you into the world, which is great. James Cameron's world building, all of that being the subject of one of my first podcasts. Uh, 3D being great, unoriginal story, all that stuff, Dances with Wolves, Fern Gully, all those things. It's got a lot of other problems, too, that I'll talk about. 
Uh, but James Cameron ruined movies for a few years. Like, convinced a bunch of people that to buy useless technology that became mostly useless. Every movie released, I don't know if people remember this, in 2009, f- for the next, like, three years to, like, 2012. I don't know how many years this fad tried to take off. But so many movies, especially since this broke all the records, especially since 3D movies cost more, so theaters are making more money, studios are making more money, it looks good to have movies break records because all of the ticket prices are inflated because all these movies are needlessly post-converted into 3D. And that's what you had. A bunch of movies that were not shot in 3D bunch of movies that didn't use any of the technology that James Cameron used to film these movies in 3D. All were post-converted in 3D. Some were shot. Most were post-converted, which, one, ruined so many movies, inflating the budgets of movies so they had to cut costs other places, but also the post-conversion 3D process and the what it looked like, the finished product, was garbage as well. Let's take a quick break from this episode because I want to talk about are you looking for the perfect gift for that art lover in your life? Look no further than InspireDisorder.com. Our gift cards can be used to purchase original artwork from The Many Faces, a collection of over 2,000 original abstract ink portraits. These one-of-a-kind pieces make for a truly unique and meaningful gift. But that's not all. Our gift cards can also be used to purchase high-quality prints and t-shirts featuring these amazing paintings. Plus, if the recipient is a fan of The Ray Taylor Show, they can use the gift card to purchase merchandise from the show as well. So why wait? Head on over to InspireDisorder.com and purchase a gift card today. Your loved one will be sure to appreciate the thought and creativity behind such a unique gift. Thank you for considering InspireDisorder.com for all of your gift needs and now back to the show so you had a bunch of movies that weren't even meant to be in 3d but put in 3d also because you had a bunch of theaters that had to buy new technology they had to upgrade their systems at movie theaters that have been struggling since the early 2000s have been on a slow decline since the early 2000s are now having to upgrade their technology in order to project 3d movies and then you have the movies that are coming out all look like garbage they're either they don't look good or in the case of m night Shyamalan's airbender movie which is from the cartoon avatar so not only did james cameron's avatar already steal in some ways the ip the brand recognition of this cartoon that was wildly successful and being brought to big screens by this big time director at the time. I don't know if M night Shyamalan had completely fallen off the cliff, but definitely his airbender movie didn't help him any because that movie was part of this huge trend in movies that had to be post-converted. So the studio that was paying M. Night Shyamalan to make this avatar, this Airbender movie spent all of this money to post-convert it and ran out of time. So they had to for- it force Shyamalan to chop that movie down. And if you do watch this movie, which I wouldn't recommend watching the Airbender movie, it is not good. But I did because I was rating M. Night Shyamalan movies and I wanted to. I wanted an excuse to watch a lot of these bad movies that he's done, which he has done some bad movies. But watching the Airbender movie, it was so clear that there were massive chunks of the story just absolutely removed. And all of that was due to the studio wanting it to be post converted into 3D and running out of time, running out of money. And all of that, that whole fad, due to Avatar, due to James Cameron. So not only do you have movies coming out worse because they are trying to do this money grab thing of post-converting to 3D. Not only are movie theaters having to upgrade their, t- their equipment 
in an already failing industry in order to display movies that are going to be obsolete fairly soon. But you also have the home theater industry, which I sold electronics at the time, and I saw what this did. It made TVs come out in 3D, right? At the time, they're plasma LCD TVs. The plasma TVs were able to do the 3D the best because they're so fast, right? Pixels and LCDs, they weren't at the 120 megahertz yet. They weren't, didn't have the fast refreshes yet. So plasmas were the thing. And the, the two different types of glasses that you had to wear because you still had to wear glasses even though you were at home. They had the polarized glasses, which sucked, which sucked. Then they had battery-powered glasses that shutter the eyes. So it would block one eye and then block the other, but, but do it really fast so you couldn't tell. And those only worked on plasmas because the plasmas were able to, it basically synced, giving you the left image and then the right image one by one. So what does that suck? It sucks because you have to have enough glasses for everybody that's going to watch the movie. And what really sucks is making sure all of those glasses are all charged up. And also, you have to wear the glasses, which wearing glasses to watch 3D movies already sucks when you're going to a movie theater. You're already paying way more money to get a 3D screening, which all of these movies, you the, like the only way to watch it is in 3D because that's how they were all intended to be released so they can get this big cash grab. But then to have to do that at home. And I don't know if you can imagine your, ba your glasses batteries dying while watching a 3D movie, or maybe you're there with a few people, somehow you afforded like four pairs of glasses, let's say, and you have a, a s average size family, and one of the pairs of glasses, the batteries didn't charge all the way, or the battery's going bad, as batteries do. Like, it's the dumbest, the dumbest technology. And not to mention that, the content available was absent there wasn't content available there was a huge delay on even with the, first off there was with avatar they had a deal with panasonic so the only way you could get avatar is with the panasonic 3d blu-ray player so not only did you have to have a 3d tv with the 3d glasses you also had to have a new blu-ray player that played 3d movies and you had to find a Blu-ray disc that had the 3D Blu-ray movie on it. And there weren't, there was like, I think some satellite providers had like a one 3D channel of like scenery and 3D. But there was like no 3D content. There were features on these TVs that would like try to convert your normal picture into 3d while you're watching it but they obviously sucked it was just a mess and i remember so often trying to just like trying to convince people this is a bad idea like you have to buy all of this equipment and even if you buy all of this equipment there's only a couple things worth watching in 3d right avatar being one of them i think there was like maybe one other movie like there were very few 3d movies at the time that were any good so this movie not only having a generic story not only being problematic with things but also really messed with movies in a big way in a big cost a lot of company a lot of people money for no reason because James Cameron wanted to, he was like really pushing for this technology. So the home theater stuff, all that stuff, aside from those issues I have with, and the, the whole industry that like you rarely see things come out in 3D anymore. Obviously the new Avatar movie came out in 3D, but other than that, it's so rare that a movie comes out in 3D. It's usually like even like the comic book movies is so rare 
that any of those come out in 3D even. Like it's so rare anything comes out in 3D anymore. That's just how that's just what happened. It died off. Like because it's it's stupid. It's a stupid technology. It's like at no point is it a fun experience. It's uncomfortable. You're wearing having to wear glasses and if you're somebody like me who wears glasses to see things clearly in general, having to wear another pair of glasses over those glasses, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. But aside from those issues, there are other problematic aspects uh, to the Avatar, right? The white savior narrative, one of the most prevalent criticisms of Avatar is its portrayal of white, the white protagonist, Jake Sully, played by Sam Worthington, who becomes the savior and leader of this indigenous Navi people. The narrative trope perpetuates a colonial mindset where the white hero is portrayed as superior and is needed to save the marginalized group. Like he was magically able to ride the one type of dragon that only five people in the history of Navi, only five people in their entire history were able to, to be able to pair with this dangerous dragon thing. And he pretty effortlessly does it. Cultural appropriation. The movie has been, accused of appropriating and stereotyping indigenous cultures the navi people and their way of life draw heavily from indigenous cultures such as native americans and african tribes some argue that the movie simplifies and marginalizes these cultures reducing them to exotic and mystical elements for entertainment purposes uh, the movie also has a lack of diversity in general despite featuring a visually stunning alien world the main characters in Avatar are predominantly played by white actors. The movie has been criticized for its lack of representation and opportunities for actors from marginalized com communities. Uh, also, this movie, the environmentalism as a backdrop, while the film emphasizes environmental themes and the importance of protecting nature, some argue that it uses these themes primarily as a backdrop for the action and romance rather than exploring them in a meaningful and nuanced way obviously yeah i mean it's it, very similar to like the fern gully thing right it's it's one of those definitely a backdrop it's similarly even like dance with wolves which is not doesn't have the environmental but obviously has the white you know savior type of a thing uh, also, this movie, the disability as a plot device, the movie features a disabled protagonist who regains mobility through his avatar body, uh, implying that disability is a limitation not to be overcome, but rather than it, to be overcome rather than embraced, uh, embracing the d diverse abilities and experiences. You know, yeah, it's a. Uh, so it's got some issues. It's got some issues. And I think knowing the director, right, an old white guy, James Cameron, who has been making movies since the 70s, probably 80s, primarily. You could almost expect, like, he is definitely a guy who probably would have been considered to be progressive in the 80s right he's really trying but obviously there's a lot of missteps there um and i think the fact that this movie in so many ways is has kind of a generic plot and storyline doesn't help him any with these things that they, there are certain issues but for me I think because I've grown, I'm also a white guy, so I have those biases as well. I'm also 42, so it's like, despite the fact that I'm trying to be more progressive and be more aware, and I do have issues, like things like these, definitely, like the white savior, there's issues with the sequel as well, with many of the same things, but... I'm also able to turn those, you know, turn things off, not 
Let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about, are you a fan of art, movies, and all things entertainment? Then you need to check out youtube.com slash inspired disorder. Our page is jam-packed with all kinds of great content, including making of videos of the many faces and ongoing art series of abstract ink paintings. But that's not all. We also feature daily episodes from the Ray Taylor Show, a podcast that brings you movie reviews, TV show reviews, episode recaps, opinion on news and entertainment and much more there's also a weekly diary and top five movie rankings of a variety of categories and if that wasn't enough we've also got how-to videos covering all kinds of topics so why wait head on over to youtube.com slash inspired disorder and start exploring the amazing content we have to offer and now back to the show there's certain things that don't necessarily take me out of a movie i mean there are definitely some positives to these movies aside from those problematic aspects um like the fight scenes and the the action and the world building the grab the the way everything looks uh the imagine imaginative way everything looks i i do enjoy that kind of the scale of everything is really great uh the machinery that the, the companies are using at the mines like Everything looks like legit, like real, looks legit, looks like I believe that I'm in this place. I mean, there's people that have like the syndrome of like thinking that they, you know, being depressed that they're no longer in Pandora or whatever because of how well, how immersive these worlds are. But the story being told definitely, definitely has an issue. And I forgot how just amazing the bioluminescent stuff. I mean, I watched this on my projector. Obviously, I don't have 3D, but I, I mean, this movie is still great with without 3D, visually great without 3D. And the bioluminescent stuff is just like so beautiful. Like there's so many aspects of this movie that's so beautiful. Great action set pieces from small fight scenes to large scale scenes. Uh, I do want to say some spoilers right i mean for anybody that maybe hasn't seen this movie in forever um some small issues i have some things i want to talk about so spoilers from here on out the first thing i noticed that didn't make any sense when the scientist played by sigourney weaver either i think she's either getting waking up from being in the avatar herself or she's coming out of cryo sleep i don't know exactly but she asks for a cigarette right out of the gate and she's smoking the cigarette inside the science lab. Like that whole scene is something that you would see in a movie from the 80s. Right. Like that scene, I think, is a great signifier. Great. Like uh, it's very telling about the person that wrote this movie and the 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 thought process behind the person that wrote this movie this is somebody that thinks that a scientist would have no problem in the future smoking a cigarette right after being coming out of some medical process inside of a science lab like not only that a scientist would be fine with smoking but also be fine with smoking in an enclosed place around other people where experiments are going on like Makes no sense. Definitely something you would see in the 80s. For sure you would see in the 80s. You know, people and scientists smoking, doctors smoking, all those things, right, before we realize. And it's kind of, that feels very out of place for for what this, and this movie came out in 2009. I mean, that's just, I think that just shows the mindset of James Cameron in these movies. Or maybe how long ago he had written these and clearly didn't didn't want to take the fact out that she smokes cigarettes and like she could have easily just gone i guess you can't even go outside because the the air is toxic but they, it's just like you just wouldn't be smoking obviously they're pumping oxygen in like there's so many reasons why her smoking a cigarette is not a good idea for the movie also the idea that jake sully never sleeps like when he is in the avatar body he's obviously his brain is awake he's like laying down kind of not kind of sleeping but his brain is active because he's controlling the avatar and then when the avatar sleeps that's when he's unplugged as himself but he still has to stay up like it's so rare that he's ever sleeping 
and you would think would cause far more issues than it does. Far more. It kind of reminded me in some ways of Severance, the Apple TV show, where the people are, when they're at work, they're a different, they feel like they're a different person. But the people, when they are in work, they never sleep. Like, they are awake all the time because they just only are conscious when they are when their Audi goes into work anyway it the aspect with Jake Sully in this movie reminded me of that um them trying to save Grace by transferring her into the avatar body through the magic tree right and she doesn't make it and I and that in some ways sets up interestingly for the sequel but it's also interesting that they're able to do that at all. And of course, Jake pretty effortlessly does the thing that only five Navi have ever done in their entire history, being able to pair with that one, you know, in order to convince them to follow him and to listen to him. He just pretty effortlessly is able to bond with this thing that only five people in their entire history have been able to do. I love the hammerhead rhinos as cavalry towards the end. It's a great moment. Uh, a great intense kind of final battle. And then Jake being able to transfer into his avatar permanently through the magical tree. Like the way everything interfaces is very interesting. The, the idea of like, using technology as a way to enhance your abilities whether it's people going into the mechs and kind of interfacing with these machines in order to gain strength that they normally wouldn't be able to have uh, in s very similar to them going into these avatars which gives them they're they're taller and stronger and of course jake has the ability to walk also the fact that the Navi themselves are able to interface with the the tree. They're able to interface with the animals in a similar way that people interface with the machines. Like the, the kind of interfacing and integrations that happen throughout the movie with different things and and cross species and and how those things are able to connect you in ways that are it, it, like i enjoy the those types of themes and those types of things that are part of these movies as just part of the world building itself um like it's clear that james cameron was trying really trying to make an impactful and important like have a movie with an important message right clearly trying to make a movie that on some level is about the natural world being able to interface with the natural world being able to take care of the environment capitalism versus environmentalism you know the the whole i think so it's it's like clear that he's trying to do that but the way he did it with like, oh, it's got to be the white people that show up and save them and lead them and do these things and to fight against the bad people. Like it's it's like definitely somebody like an old white guy th trying to be progressive, but falling short in a lot of ways. But still great, like like an epic sci fi action film, as he is known to do which a lot of his movies have it like I watched Titanic recently there are some issues with Titanic as well right but James Cameron knows how to do action he knows how to do world building right and the fact that he has other writers helping him in the sequels hopefully can you know guide the story into something that is more progressive and is actually able to focus on the important things without falling short in a lot of ways but yeah it's it's a great movie despite the fact that it's magically forgettable in a lot of ways like even though i hadn't watched it like it was weird watching it because there's so much of it i forgot 
but also it's like I knew all the the beats that were going to happen. Like I knew all of the things that were going to happen because it's like you see it in other movies, but like the 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 details of everything I had forgotten. And it was just kind of fun to to go back to that world and all that. Um, so next Wednesday, I'm going to be reviewing Avatar The Way of Water. And then next Sunday after that, I'll be ranking my top five James Cameron films, uh, which I've been wanting to rewatch. And uh, since the, that sequel came out, gives me an opportunity to rewatch all these things and, and review the movies. And uh, so I'll be talking about the sequel next week. Thank you all for tuning into this episode of The Ray Taylor Show. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Avatar from 2009. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new movie and TV show reviews. And join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or over on YouTube.com slash Inspired Disorder. Until next time, I see you. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.